Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final session. Is this the final session? Second to final session of the uh, Virtual Empowering Teaching Excellence Conference. And we are very pleased today to have Shelly Arnold, who is one of the master organizers of this conference, uh, to whom we owe the great day that we've been having. So. Um, I am going to let Shelly introduce herself and uh, turn the time over to her. Thank you so much. Thanks, Neil. And I just want to mention, because he brought it up, um, a conference like, like this takes so much effort and so much time. We've been planning for over a year with the faculty committee and the subcommittee to get this done. But a day like today doesn't come off with the help, without the help of so many people. Neil and City being one of them, Sam Clem has stepped up a lot, all of our moderators and people were facilitating the different groups while they were getting ready to present. So while me and Travis might be closer to the face of this, most certainly we are not the only ones who brought off what seems to be going like a successful sessions today. So a big shout out to everybody else who was involved in this as well. Okay, so today my session is gonna be about what's new in ETE. And you need to let me be host. <laughs> we got into talking and that's what happens. Yeah. We don't do what yeah. we're supposed to do. Here we go. Okay, you should be good. Perfect. We're gonna go into Chrome here and then we're gonna jump into what's new and what's going on. Okay, I'm going to be jumping in and out of the presentation because I am going to go to a couple websites for this. So just so you know ahead of time. Also a cool thing that I got added into here is some QR codes. So you don't have to follow me directly, but if you want, I'll leave it up long enough for you to pull up your QR reader and take images there and you can follow me as I go or visit them later. These will be up on the website when we're all done. Okay, what's new going on in ETE? Well, our mission for ETE is essentially allowing a place where a culture of te teaching and learning grows and develops. And I really want emphasis for this presentation, this idea of grow, right? As we've known over this last year, development and teaching has sprung up in leaps and bounds in all different directions. And in my opinion, it sprung up in ways that it really needed to with accessibility and diversity and learning technology, because this is the direction technology was going and COVID this last year pushed us to have to do it. So a lot of what we've learned in this last year isn't something that we, once things go back to normal, we can just drop, but things that are gonna become crucial part of teaching. Through ETE, we grow because we want our instructors and our students to continue to grow as well. So I'm gonna talk about what's new in ETE and what you can expect over this next year. Okay, we're gonna start off with our publications and we have several now. Okay, the first is, and that's that QR code right there. We have our Spark, Spark repository. I'm gonna minimize that so you guys can see this. So our Spark repository is created in the last year. And the idea of this is highlighting the scholarship of teaching and learning that our USU instructors are doing. Right now, the main ways that we've been collecting these have been through our contribute badges and asking permission from instructors if we can add this to our repository. However, if there's things that you're not contributing through the ET10 program that you would like highlighting in regards to the scholarship of teaching and learning here at Utah State with your students, you can send that to me, you can send it to Empowering Teaching Excellence email address or to Travis, and we can get that put in there. So again, I'm gonna hit that escape. And our publications, this is our homepage if you haven't been able to visit it before. And here's our Spark repository. It's gonna be broken down to different years. Once we get enough information in here, we can break it down into different topics as well. The library helped us with this. It's an amazing resource. The more we get in here, the more that we can support this resource for everybody else at the university as well. Okay, jumping back over. Our open book series. And this was Travis's baby and he, <laughs> He worked on this a lot. And the point of the open book series have a peer reviewed focus book series that is free to the public. So free to everyone in education. If you've gone to any of the open book 
sessions today or the quad side sessions we had from Benjamin Berger, you know that open educational resources are really about accessibility. The cost of getting technology, buying books, getting access to journal articles is increasing over time. However, we want people to be able to have these resources to learn about pedagogy in a place that doesn't cost them anything because we want our instructors across the nation to improve overall. So we have our book series and our very first one came out and we had Chris Gonzalez, um, Casey Lundstrom and Travis were the editors on that. There's actually a podcast associated with that now where there's weekly ones coming out and I'm gonna show you where you can go to do that. The two new ones that we have opening up are Making Connections, which is Mentoring in Higher Education, which David Law from Utah State is editing. And then we have Explore How to Teach. And this is specifically graduate students telling other graduates their experience on teaching in higher education and learning that way. And Sam Clem is the editor of that book. And you had that QCR code, but I'm gonna click here again, again under publications and go into our open book series. As you can see, when I drop down, you could go to any of the specific ones here. The open call for making connections is actually gonna start next week because we had invitations first. And then the explore one is the end of the month. So if you have a graduate student who's really interested, who wants to talk about their experience, Sam Clem has a nice outline uh, what we're looking for in this book. Okay. Next. And we all know about the journal. We love it. Okay. So the journal, it has its nine issues and then we'll have another one coming on the fall. But what you might not know is that we have a special issue talking about what we've learned over the eight, last 18 months and what instructors can tell other instructors about being resilient and moving forward during that time. We've also have a new process in regards to peer reviewing in G. I'm going to show you how that goes instead of just sending an email to the editor, right? We have a new sign up policy where we can link people who have the background with people who are actually reviewing. Because when G got started, we were asking people and trying to look for them. And now that we've grown, we have a new way of doing things. Again, we have that QR code there. Oh, I do want to mention something super cool. We are we have been downloaded in 168 countries and we have over 31,000 downloads. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go to publications again. Okay. So this is our latest one from the spring. But what I wanna show you is this tab over here on the right, which is new that came out in the spring where you could click on here and become a reviewer. And this links up to not only Kim Hales, who is the editor of the journal, but also with Jason Olson, who is the co-editor um, who can review these and get you, what, get you lined up to review some articles here. Remember reviewing articles is a contribute level badge along with actually submitting an article for peer review. Okay. Back here. Okay. Moving on to programs. Okay. <gasps> we have worked so hard on this. <laughs> so, this is our Scott's program. This is two collaborators on teaching and Sam Clem, along with our undergraduate teaching fellows. And there's a couple of them in that picture right there. Um, have worked on this program. And what this is essentially bringing the students into this teaching and learning community, not just as receivers of information, but people who give information back. So the outline of this program is through ETE, we've hired UTFs and people can sign up to get their syllabus reviewed, observations or focus groups where we send the UTF into the classroom and they work with your students to get feedback. The benefit of this minus the actual peer review that you get from a colleague is you get the student perspective. Our UTFs are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. And they come in with this view of, they don't have the teaching background. They don't have the pedagogical background. They have the student perspective of this doesn't make sense or this needs to be clear. And with the focus groups, they talk directly to your students where the students can feel comfortable giving feedback and feel like they're not 
um, in a power dynamic, that they're talking to another student one-on-one -on -one and really concerned about what they're getting out of the class and the feedback that they can give. Okay. I need to move that chat. That's not working for me there. Okay. I'm gonna go up to programs. That's why I did it that way. And we're gonna go to our Scots. So you can request these specific service. They come through here. And then we have Luke White, who's gonna be in charge of our Scots program. We'll set up times and work with you. Our Scots go, do go through training in communication and running focus groups and observing. So it's not some amateur coming into your, and it's gonna screw up your course. Okay. Next on the list for programs is our peer review. So up until the spring, City was in charge of the peer review. You could go on their website and request a peer review and that would go into their to-do list. However, City gave up peer review and handed that over to ETE. Um, and in doing so, we set up a whole new process for peer review. You can sign up to be a reviewer or a reviewee. And the process that ETE, ETE has set up in place is you go in, you meet with your reviewer as a reviewee, you talk about what you want reviewed, you build some a relationship with the reviewer. They come in, they review your course, focusing on the things you want them to focus on. And then there's a follow-up meeting where that review and, crit and critique is discussed. We require it that way because we want that relationship built. It's really easy for someone to go in your course and give a critique and it, it hit hard, right? However, when you have that relationship built, you take it, you take that criticism back, those critiques, good and bad, and you're able to look at that from a productive standpoint. Okay. We're going to escape again. Okay. Go back to programs and this is our peer review. And on this page, you can sign up to have a peer request. And again, that's a Qualtrics or this is a Monday form you can fill out and you're gonna focus on when you want it done, the kind of course you're doing, two or three objectives you want your peer reviewer to look at. And then you agree to this entire process. And I love this drop down because it says, yes, I agree to the process or no, thank you. I would not like to engage in this. Okay. You could also, one other thing that I want to make sure that you know, you can sign up for a different type of peer reviewer. You can have someone within your department, within your college, an instructional designer, or ET suggested reviewer. It all depends what you're looking for. Some departments or colleges require a colleague, and we can help set that up for you. But a lot of different departments and colleges do require some sort of peer review. So this is a great way of getting that done. Okay. Ooh, one of my favorites. I like it all, so. <laughs> ET10. So we're gonna talk about some of the changes that you can see in ET10, and this is gonna take a little bit longer than the others. And here is that code over here. Not sure if this is blocking you or not. Okay, so if you don't know, and if you're brand new to ETE, ET10 is a program that we, we run that promotes continuous professional development. It's been shown that one-off workshops, conferences, podcasts, things like that, don't really translate to changes with the instructor and therefore don't impact student learning. However, literature does show that continuous professional development does. So ET10 is aptly named for 10 professional development opportunities, 10 badges on your way to getting teaching certified. The benefit of this to our instructors is not only that they maintain Hello, this is professional development. Neil, mute yourself. I don't think I can mute him. I think I can. There we go. <laughs> Not only does it allow continuous professional development to allow you to implement new practices, learn new things, but also document your teaching. As we know, as a researcher, it's really easy to kind of show this is how many articles, this is how much funding I brought in, things like that. However, it's really hard to show teaching documentation and improvement. So what we do in ETE is provide both those, that professional development along with that documentation for you to be able to put on a CV promotion packet, all of these things. Okay, new things. So 
We've been working with sustainability office to create a sustainable teaching track. Um, this is really exciting. It's still in development now, but we have many new badges that go along with this, along with planetary thinking. If you didn't see Alexi Lamb and John Ferguson this morning, they talked a little bit about sustainable teaching there. And we'll have a new track with a learning circle starting in the spring. So new badges, we have the Scots badge we talked about, but we also have, if you saw Melody Chamber and Harrison Kleiner's quad side session, we also have the learning specialist badge, which is you come in, you work with a group of people, you get a lot of information, and then you work with one of their learning specialists to actually start implementing those things in the classroom. We've included more badges that are focused on the DMIT track and the objectives we have there because we didn't have a real great balance before. So we have the events from the Inclusion Center. We also have Aggies Think Care Act and the Center for Intersectional Gender Studies and Research events. Remember, when you go to these different events, their point is for different things. So when you choose an event that you want to submit for ET, all ET badges have to be focused on teaching. So make sure that that event that you're going on um, focuses on teaching that you're going to submit here for ET badges. Last but not least, we finally got the Explore course up and running, which you can see because it's one of the requirements for the Explore College Teaching Certificate. And we had five people receive that this year. We're also, because we're getting a little high in badges and we're seeing some redundancy in the objectives that we're decommissioning a few badges. So city workshops, there's a lot of ones that are out of date or they don't offer anymore. So those ones are gonna be retired. And when I say decommissioning, it doesn't mean that your badges are gonna be taken away once you've earned them. What happens is that we retire them so people can't go in and submit for them anymore, but you still have that badge. So the ones for the conference, ETE conference specifically, we're going to remove. We have up to three of those, and we would like people to expand on their professional development. So we're going to get rid of at least the ET third. And then some of the seminars, that is also you can go up to ET seminar third, and we're going to eliminate some of those. We have a lot of really great badges and more and more coming. So we want people to expand on their professional development. Resources. We have some amazing resources. We had um, we had a survey that went out last January that talked about what you guys need in regards to implement badges. And then I sat down with many instructors at the university and said, hey, what's ET doing right and what can they be doing better? And from that, me and Sam Clem worked together to create more resources for instructors, build more scaffolding, right, for this course. So the first one that we did is teaching statement. It used to be called teaching philosophy badge, but teaching statement focuses it more on actual literature instead of just a belief system. So we have a teaching statement now, and we have a whole web page set for that. And I'm going to link over that in a second. We also have personalized meetings with Sam Clem, a member of our office. Um, and she's amazing. So if you're nervous about your teaching statement, or you just want some insight or somebody to review it before you submit it, you can have a meeting with Sam Clem and she can really walk you through that process. Also completing implements. I spent a lot of time working with people on implements, but I feel like people feel like that's an imposition to me. Meeting with instructors, favorite part of my job. And I love working through these because they're like little puzzles. So there's a web page that's not quite complete. We didn't get it done for today but we're working on it to walk people through how to do an implement, but you can also set up personal meetings with me. I meet with instructors every week to go over implements. I would love to be able to meet with you. Also within the ET Canvas course, we're gonna start utilizing the discussion boards more. And this is another place where you can go and ask your questions of how can I use this for um, promotion? How can I figure out how to get this implement done? I have this really great idea, but I don't know how to collect results. And we'll be utilizing those discussion boards in the Canvas more. I do just want to step out for a second and show you. This is the steep teaching statement page that we have. Talks about some resources you can have, everything cited here, what you should include, right? And where can I find some more information? Okay. Okay. So in regards to the website or the Canvas, the Canvas course, we have new navigation. If you've been on um, since January, you've seen that we have the new navigation system, new tabs, new buttons on the homepage to help you walk through. 
Baron also came in and created a video for navigation on the front board as part of our faculty committee. So thank you, Baron, for doing that. We also have a new plan and progress tab, which I'm going to show you guys in just a minute. The discussion boards that I just talked about and the USU email update. So I'm going to talk to all of you really quick about this. So when USU email updated for everybody, um, they gave you that new email address with an A number in it. What they did is they made that your default email in Canvas. And what that did for us in the ET course is it created a new pathway for everybody because your pathway is connected to your email address. So if you didn't see my announcement a couple weeks ago, you have to merge those emails together in Badger. I can help walk you through that. There's also the announcement that gives step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. Um, but if you're not seeing badges that used to be there, there's a problem, that's, that's pretty much what's going on. Okay, but I do wanna show you this really cool tab the planning progress one okay so it's over here okay so we had this built out for us and what this is is it tracks the progress and helps you plan out your badges so let's say i met with ete and i decided that i was going to do the digital age teaching track and i was going to meet with city and I was going to implement, I was going to do my teaching statement. So I'm going to throw that in here too. And I always contribute at the conference, right? So I want to put the contribute in. Nah, I want Basta, didn't I? Over here. Okay. So this starts keeping track of your badges. You have to save the badge list and then refresh the page. Okay. And as you can see, all of them are showing up here. This info is also blocked off over in this corner. So if you ever wanna get in here, when I added the track, it shows all of the required badges on that track now. And I can add notes. So August, 2021, August, 2021. Save note, close. And again, we have to refresh the page when we're doing this. And you can see that now there's a little note up here in this corner that I wrote in here. So you can say, I plan to do this then, or you can take notes during the session and keep them in here. So when you're ready to do your engage, you're ready to do your reflection, you can do that here. We also have these track bars up top. So when you add a track specifically, it'll tell you how many of these badges you've completed or not. It'll also tell you how many of the engages that you've put into this box have been completed along with the implements and contributes. What I really want to make clear here is that this box over on the right and these trackers are reflective of each other. The trackers at the top are not focused on if you've earned your certificate yet. What they're keeping track of is everything that you've put in this box right here. So it's gonna tell you how many of these five to earn the track. And then if you complete the city individualized consultation, it's gonna say 100% of the engages are done. Well, you need six engages to get the teaching scholar certificate. So what these trackers do once again is focus on what is in this box alone. Okay. Okay. And I think that's all the updating we're gonna do for ET10. Okay. <gasps> funding and awards. So funding and awards that we can do through ETE. This is our newest one and this is FACTS because we like acronyms in ETE. Foundations for Advancing Collaboration Between Student teachers and students. And this is where you work with the SCAS, those undergraduate UTFs. So this is a $500 annual um, award that's given. And we are focusing obviously on early faculty for this. And what it is, is beyond a Scott coming into your classroom and like doing a focus group, you're actually paired with a Scott from the beginning of the semester. And they come in and they sit in your class, they talk with you and they help you reflect on your teaching practices for an entire semester. They come in about every other week. They sit, they talk with you. They help you keep a teaching journal. And then the following semester, they help you start implementing things. They point you towards city and the resources that you can do to adjust your teaching, ETE, different things in that way. So why I need to point this out right now is because this application ends at the end of the week. So you can go to that QR code right there, learn more about facts and sign up for that. Again, that is the end of this week, the, this funding is done. 
next is, and if you haven't heard about it, um, you're in the perfect place, but if you have, just give me a second. So we have our scholar awards, and this is where ETE provides money for the scholarship of teaching and learning, doing research into your teaching. And this is up to a $4,000 award up to, and we collect about seven to eight recipients every year. And we put them in a cohort where they work together um, up to two years, all the way through developing a really succinct and specific research question through IRB approval, through doing the research, all the way up through publication. They meet monthly for the first year, and then they meet individually with the SOTL um, fellow, which right now that's Sylvia Ree doing an excellent job there um, to help work through the scholarships of teaching and learning. There is a preference to individuals who have completed the teaching scholar certificate. They get the first look and there is a spot that's left open for a graduate student every year. This opens in May and you start in September. Okay. And that's all I've got for now. So you can click on this QR code and you're earn your ET conference badge engage. Remember, if you already earned one, there's two other ones that are still available before they get decommissioned, right? So if if nobody, well, I'm done. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask now. Okay, I'm not check. I'm not seeing any in the chat at the moment. So we'll just give you another moment or two. You can put a question in the chat or unmute your mic and. Because I'm so succinct, Neil, is what ends What's up that? happening. I get to the point they're like, oh, I completely understand this. That makes complete I, sense. I do not completely understand this. And as you know, I get lost quite often. So I don't have a specific question other than to say, um, I worship the ground you walk on, Shelly, because you take all these really big things and you you made them very clear and very concise and very straightforward. And I can't thank you enough from um, from badges to all the different things that ETE. I think we've grown so quickly that I know I'm really familiar with some things and other things I'm like, what? So you did a really great job of just bringing it all together. So I, I'm very grateful. Thank you. So we do, it's a whole team effort. A year ago today, it was Travis as a full-time person and me as a part-time person. In the last year, um, Travis got moved up to director. I got a full-time position. Sam Clem came on and um, as an amazing resource. And we actually have undergraduate UTS too, so. Michelle, I had a question. If I, if I review, which I've done recently, does it automatically count on the badges or do I have to submit something to say that I did that? So that's a great question. So for badges, for engaged level badges, you have to submit a reflection for that. And I can work you through that. And Don, you don't actually have to write anything. You could submit a video reflection, just answering the questions. Like you could do a screen capture in Zoom and record that and then submit that video. You actually don't have to write anything if you don't want to. Some of the best reflections are in video. I don't mind doing that. I just, uh, Kim had me do a review uh, for an uh, article for the Jeet, and I didn't realize you could get a badge for it. So I, I learned something new and I thought, well, I might as well, like I said, a lot of times I've talked to you before, I probably do stuff I could get badges for. I just don't think about the uh, submitting to get the badge for it. Don, I'll send you a nice follow-up email then. Right here. I, I, yeah, I appreciate that. Like I said, I, I, I and I, I do appreciate, like Kim said, all the stuff you guys do and the trainings you've had. I enjoyed the uh, small teaching book that we did uh, this summer. I thought that was awesome. And I'm actually using that in my methods class this fall and I've uh, and used it in my 2010 class for elementary ed teachers, some quotes and stuff from it. So I think that's what's important is, is you learn things, you wanna incorporate those into your class. So I appreciate that. And like I said, I just feel bad that I don't think about where I could actually earn badges to, you know what I'm saying? Cause I probably do stuff and I just don't think about it. Well, let me send an email to you so that we can get you that documentation so that that certificate is something that you could put into your documentation, right? Cause I know that it for you and for the majority of people participating in ET 10, it's about the improvement 
but we want to also make sure that you're getting that acknowledgement as well. So yeah, and that's a contribute level badge. Nice, good job, Don. Thank you, I appreciate it. I appreciate Kim doing that. I'll make sure to sign up for the, to review if you need me to. Shelly, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I am lucky enough that I now have, I think somebody who did the AQ um, uh, training is now going to come and review my class for my peer review. Mm -hmm. I think you, I don't know if you signed, assigned that to me. Is that part of the ETE badge reflection? And where, where do I find that? And yeah. <laughs> Is that part so, of the assignments too? Yes. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump over and submit a badge in just a second. But yes, I did hook you up with that. And I just want to make it clear to everybody, because I don't think I did, is that you actually don't need to earn the badge in ETE. You don't have to do a peer review through ETE. You just have to show documentation that peer review was done. And um, you also don't have to use our documentation. If you make a comment in that Qualtrics form that says, hey, my department requires this documentation, we could send that right on to the peer reviewer as well. There just wasn't any um, fallback for departments that didn't have that. We want that material available. So you don't actually have to use our material if you don't, if that's not what's most suited for you. Okay. So let's go in here. I'm going to go to the home page. Okay. So submit a badge is where you can go to right on the home page and see all the badges. Okay. And it, it breaks it down to the different tiers of the engage, implement, contribute. If you don't know what those are, maybe you should set up a PYP with me. And um, <laughs> so a peer review is it directly into an implement. So if you are the reviewee, it is peer review course. And if you are the reviewer, it is peer review course and contribute. Okay. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out because I wanted someone outside of my college to review and that's who you connected me with. And I just want to say like, what a great resource. Thank you. Thank you. We already had a pre-meeting this summer. And she's going to review and my teaching um, uh, during week four of my class. So just again, um, a really great service that you're offering um, for those of us who want kind of in-class reviews. Excellent. Thank you, Leanne. And I'm excited you're an AQ. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Remember that I'm always here for you guys, right? Work again. I can't, I can't stress this enough. I love working with instructors. So please send me an email if you guys need help with ET10 or knowing the resources we have here, right? Um, it took me many years to figure out that city and ETE even existed. And I don't want anyone to have to struggle for their professional development here at Utah State. Teaching is one of our primary focuses and I want all those resources available. Okay. Thanks everybody. And stick around for that one more session this afternoon. Thank you so much, Shelly. We sure all appreciate you. And I think, I hope you felt the love while you've been here. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Good job, Shelly. Thanks, John.